Happy Friday. I'm Kaui Lucas and this is Hawaii is my mainland here every Friday at 3 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. And um, this week I was hanging out in a bar with a bunch <laughs> of nasty women. <laughs> and I thought, wow, why don't I just bring them on my show? <laughs> one of them was a, a senator. She's not with us tonight, but one of the women in the bar was a senator. And I realized it's the second time I've been hanging out with a U.S. senator in a bar full of millennials in the last couple of months. Maisie Hirono. Maisie Hirono is an incredible <laughs> asset to Hawaii. <laughs> she is. So it was, uh, Maisie and I were, were both there mm -hmm. to celebrate you mm -hmm. both mm -hmm. and Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. You're, I have two CEOs here. This is a first for me <laughs> <laughs> in 55 shows, a double header. <laughs> so, so we had <laughs> we have Elaine Rose, who is the CEO of Planned Parenthood Votes of North, North the Greater West, Northwest and Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Northwest and Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And you are Chris Shabano, yes. who's the CEO of Planned Parenthood of, of the, the Great Greater North, Northwest West and the and Hawaiian, Hawaiian Islands. Islands. Yes. I've, I love that you, the Hawaiian Islands. I know. I thought it was poetic. Very, very uh -huh. nice. Uh -huh. We really appreciate it. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's wonderful to be here. <laughs> so, it's a big deal this year. Mm -hmm. It's a huge 100 year. hundred years. We are not only a hundred years old nationwide as Planned Parenthood, but we are 50 years old here in Hawaii on the islands. Uh -huh. And so, it, it is worth celebrating all of the work that people have done to make sure Planned Parenthood is here, and all of the people who've, who we've been able to serve over the course of those five decades. And, and over 100 years, when I was shocked when I, when I saw that, actually. I, I, just, mm -hmm. I never thought about it, but wow, 100 years ago, really? Planned Parenthood got its start in um, 1916. Margaret Sanger and her colleagues smuggled diaphragms into the country, um, stashed in pickle vats on boats. <laughs> And, wow. Um, yes, because at that time it was considered obscene to either talk about, educate about, or contemplate contraception. And um, they went to um, Holland and got some diaphragms and brought them over and began to educate women who at that point were struggling with the idea of 15, 16 children over the course of their reproductive lives, many of which whom did not survive. Um, and it must have been tragic for people trying to feed a family when they had no control over how that was working. So it was a very important thing to have happen. Yeah. And that was all sort of a byproduct of the Industrial Revolution, really, that mm -hmm. we didn't have natural spacing and, mm -hmm. you know, women mm -hmm. working aren't able to, to do nurse. And so it, was, it wasn't like we just figured it out. It's just that the technology was slow and... and catching up with our, our new reality. Well, there's actually a museum in Toronto about contra contraception worldwide over the millennia. And um, ancient Egypt had some contraceptive methods and, and condoms were made out of a variety of things. But what we, what we began to need was sort of a much more mass-produced availability um, as the population increased um, pretty drastically and as, as people needed more security about um, how they could space their families and children. Actually, here in Hawaii, I don't know how widely known it is, but I have um, read studies that we had both um, uh, the knowledge of using herbs yes, and, um, and pessaries, mm -hmm. which are an, mm -hmm. an ancient form of a IUD. Diaphragm. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Ancient form of diaphragm, yeah, diaphragm. absolutely. Yeah. Diaphragm. Okay. yeah, yeah, not inside the uterus. <laughs> that would have been trickier, but, but outside, sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, um, we have another one, uh, a, a short video of that your um, organization has mm -hmm. put together talking about this um, historic moment. Let's take a little look at that and come back and talk some more. Planned Parenthood's story began 100 years ago with a radical idea that access to sexual and reproductive health care had the power to change lives and the world. This idea sparked a reproductive revolution by a brave and defiant few. It was not easy, and it was not without opposition. But these few were joined by millions more over many years and across many generations. Planned Parenthood, once a single health center, is now known and trusted for its sexual and reproductive health care. 
We're the largest source of sexual education in the country and an essential provider of cancer screenings, diagnosis and treatment of STIs, and other preventive care, as well as a catalyst for laws and policies that ensure equal access to health care and reproductive freedom. And that's just our first hundred years. Moving toward our second century, we still face opposition. It's still not easy. Yet we are determined. Determined to build a world free of stigma and judgment. A world where neither income nor zip code determines access to birth control or abortion. A world where the rising generation will know, embrace, and continue to build on Planned Parenthood's proud legacy. And a second century defined by as much compassion, conviction, and courage as our first. Because we care. We always will. No matter who, no matter where, no matter what. And freshly imported into our downtown <laughs> studio here at Think Tech Hawaii is um, Lori Field. Um, Lori, you are here. You are on a, one of our on-island um, uh, staff members of Planned Parenthood. Tell us about what you get to do. Sure. So I'm the Hawaii Legislative Director and the Public Affairs Manager for Planned Parenthood Votes Northwest in Hawaii. I'm uh, not only the lobbyist, but I'm also uh, the person who works with a lot of our volunteers. Uh, we have a community organizer in Hawaii uh, who uh, together we operate a fabulous program of volunteers who are out and about even today uh, looking to get out the vote for our um, upcoming election and um, hoping to um, ensure that women's health is protected from here on out. So let's talk about that election a little. This um, last uh, legislative session I was working in one of the offices and all of a sudden heard this this spew erupt from the the you know the floor of the house of representatives and i thought wait a minute that's the nice representative from from eva beach who's just down the hall wait a minute what, what what's happening here and fo followed 20 minutes of everybody looking kind of nervous um as as all of this um er er erupted and uh i guess many people know that Bob McDermott has this um, really vitriolic stance um, about Planned Parenthood. Um, but as I began to talk to you all about it, I, I realized, well, you're used to this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure are. I, although I have to say that it was interesting looking at that from the mainland because the sex ed curricula that was being discussed is really incredibly highly regarded nationwide. Um, and for it to be controversial in Hawaii was a little surprising. Um, and so we run into that from time to time, someone who takes a different point of view, and you know that's legitimate in a, in a pluralistic society. Um, but we are really grateful that the vast majority of the people in Hawaii understand how very important sex ed is and have been incredibly supportive of it. Um, and in fact, um, Hawaii has the most progressive sex education law now in the entire United States bar none, and you have a right to be very proud of that. Thank you, Lori and team, for, um, and, and all of our allies in that for uh, the work that was well, done. Well, how did that happen? That sounds like a lot of work. Well, uh, as Chris was saying, Hawaii is not immune to, um, to having uh, people who object to the work that we do. Um, in this case, uh, you know, it's just a, a matter of ensuring that people have the education that they need to uh, make good decisions, whether that's our youth who are receiving sexual health education or the community leaders that we work with uh, to make sure that they are, are, that they are understand what we're doing and, that, and how the program is going to have a good impact on our youth. Um, unfortunately, there's always, always some people who uh, just reject that information out of hand. And so we just have to continue working with our champions and supporting them in all their efforts and making sure that we continue to move the ball forward. And having, having um, uh, fighting that misinformation, mm -hmm. like dealing with that spin, mm -hmm. must be, uh, feel like mm, 
not something you really want to deal with, but on some level you kind of have to do it that a little bit. I think, I mean, yeah, I think part of it is, I think we see that really as our job. It's really p part of educating mm -hmm. uh, the public, educating our legislators, giving them the facts, actually. So with respect to sex education, we know that teen pregnancy across America, and certainly here in Hawaii, has dropped. And part of the reason why it's dropped is because of good sex education mm -hmm. and access to contraceptives. Mm -hmm. So the more facts we have for folks, and, and again, here in Hawaii, we are so fortunate. We have so many great champions we are able to move forward really great public policy. And one of the things that's so exciting about working here in this state is that the progressive things that we can do here, we can send across uh, to America, to the other states, to say, you know what? We don't have to be sort of stuck here in a, in a different uh, zone, if you will. We can actually move forward. We can actually make great progress. And so it's, it's really exciting to be here, and the sex education effort we've done is just one of those examples. We're very excited to be in Hawaii as a merged mainland and Hawaii organization because Hawaii is fantastic, and we love the leadership that we think can happen in Hawaii that can uh, pioneer many of the sort of public policies and things that we've dreamed about having and then move them across the western U.S. first and, and <laughs> then to the northeast eventually where everything uh, ends up. <laughs> well, I love the idea of, of Hawaii being on the vanguard. And, mm -hmm. and, but we sort of have to be. We don't, we don't have the luxury of going to Mexico uh, for, or, or Canada mm -hmm. for, for health care that mm -hmm. is not uh, available. Mm -hmm. um, you know, mm -hmm. you know, but Hawaii's never had to. Hawaii has always been on the vanguard of women's health, and and we are so proud to be here um, working to I even advance that. Um, there was never any doubt when Roe v. Wade, even before Roe v. Wade happened, the people of Hawaii were standing firm that um, people had their the individual right to choose, and um, and passed laws accordingly. And you all have a legacy um, that is very impressive, and that the rest of us can learn from. Well, we, we learned the hard way like everybody else. I mean, not far from where we're sitting now, a uh, hundred years ago, not even that long ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, 60 years ago, there were, um, you know, when it wasn't legal to have abortions, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. that this is where people came in, the, mm -hmm. in, in Chinatown and right. lots of very tragic stories. Mm -hmm. um, but thank God we don't have to deal with that now. Right. And whether it's um, uh, condoms or um, a cancer screening, mm -hmm. um, we do have uh, planned parenthood. Mm -hmm. We have not, o and not only um, on Oahu. Mm -hmm. That's right. We have a health center in Maui. We have educators uh, in Kauai and the Big Islands, and as well as uh, Maui and um, Oahu. And we're really proud to be in expansion mode in our 100th year. Not only are we working um, to increase our footprint in terms of medical services and educational services, adding things like peer education groups, um, what we call teen council, which is very exciting, groups of young people that sort of fan out. We always say it's, it's wonderful that if kids are going to get their sex ed from the street corner, then by God, we're going to be sure that street corner knows what they're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but not only that, we have our team working very hard on public policies that embrace all of this so that we can um, keep all of this moving and finance it for people without the means and, um, and just basically make things better and better for the, the population, populace here. Well, we'll take this moment to um, take a break and hear about some of the other uh, Think Tech shows mm -hmm. and be right back. Hello, my name is Crystal. Let me tell you, my talk show, I'm all about health. It's healthy to talk about sex. It's healthy to talk about things that people don't talk about. It's healthy to discuss things that you think are unhealthy because you need to talk about it. So I welcome you to watch Quok Talk and engage in some provocative discussions on things that do relate to healthy issues and have a well-balanced attitude in life. Join me. Hey, how you doing? Uh, welcome to Hibachi Talk. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm your co-host. And we have a nice program here every Friday at 1 o'clock on Think Tech Studios where we talk about technology and we have a little bit of fun with it. So join us if you can. Thanks. Aloha. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. 
Welcome back to Hawaii is my mainland. I'm Kaui Lucas, and with me here today are three amazing women warriors for Planned Parenthood. I have Chris Charbonneau, I have Elaine Rose, and I have Lori Field. And um, I met these three incredible Wahine this past Wednesday, and part of the 100-year celebration mm -hmm. of Planned Parenthood, and got to learn about a fantastic new tool you guys have, the app. Um, right. Who, who's going to talk about that? Uh, I am. Okay. Um, the the we, we were trying to figure out how do we, since we are responsible for Alaska, we're sp responsible for Hawaii. How do we serve? Uh, people in really geographically diverse areas where they can't necessarily just hop in a car and come to a health center. So we've um, put together an app, a, a telemedicine app called Planned Parenthood Care so that people could um, interface with us from their telephones or their tablets or their desktops. Um, wherever they might happen to be in any of the four states that Planned Parenthood of the Great Northwest and the Hawaiian Islands serves. and. Um, so one, one goes to the either um, Android or the Apple Store, you download Planned Parenthood Care, the app, um, you click on it and our health center clinician will come up um, and speak to you. Um, you can get birth control, you can have a sexually transmitted disease um, screening, by which we mean um, you will have a conversation. I want to be clear okay. about that. You don't have to take pictures of anything. Um, have a conversation with the clinician and then we will drop ship you a kit home. Um, if the conversation is about birth control, we will drop ship your birth control home. And we have the ability to bill your insurance. We have arrangements with most of the Hawaii insurers um, so that, um, you know, all of that can be covered in the normal course of health care. But we feel like we wanted to be able to be sure that even if people can't get to us, we can interface with you. You can be part of Planned Parenthood. Uh, I, was, I was so excited about this because, you know, if you've ever lived on one of the neighbor islands, things can be really tough. Right. And so I downloaded your app and mm -hmm. I'm, now we're seeing it. It's like, wow, yeah, I can sign up for an appointment mm -hmm. and, and, and talk to somebody and there's her real name and her picture and she's real and she looks really friendly. And yep. Wow. <laughs> and she's talking awesome. to you. And you get more questions answered that way than you probably ever have in any appointment you've ever had. But we were very pleased that when we first launched it, a very first person who took advantage of it was a woman on Molokai. Um, felt that this was an ideal way and she was like no way this is the best ever um, <laughs> when we when we launched in Hawaii we were um, serving a woman up above the Arctic Circle she was not only uh, 500 miles away from the nearest town she was thousands of miles away from anything and um, she was very pleased a few days later to have the bush plane come in and land with her birth control supplies so wow it's an innovation that we are thrilled is working the way we wanted to we just want more people to know about it so thank you for having us on your show so we can <laughs> tell people that that exists and it's possible well, so not only do we have a, a quite a good uh, legislature, mm -hmm. well, maybe because of we have quite a good legislature, mm -hmm. you have been able to do some other exciting things this past year, Laura. Yes, so as part of our 100th anniversary across the country, it's also fi our 50 year anniversary in Hawaii mm -hmm. as Planned Parenthood. So um, we are very fortunate to have uh, leaders in all levels of government, including our Honolulu Mayor, Kurt Caldwell, who just recently illuminated Honolulu <laughs> Hale for the entire week pink in celebration of Planned Parenthood's anniversary. Thank you, and Mr. Also, Mayor. Yes, <laughs> yes. And also sent us a great letter of support and presented mm -hmm. it to um, us, a bunch of staff and volunteers, um, in a lovely ceremony at, the, at Honolulu Hale. So, um, and this past legislative session, you were able to do uh, another, or you, we, mm -hmm. were able to get some, yes. some a first, right? Mm -hmm. As far as um, a year's worth of... Yes. We were. We were able to pass um, the first bill in the country that requires that um, birth control be dispensed 12 months at a time and be covered under private insurance as well as Medicaid. And it was the first time in the country. We've had some variations across the country, but no one has done it quite that way, with no edge restric restrictions also. So important. So yes. important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Instead of having to go to your pharmacist every month to get your pills refilled. Right. Any barrier that people don't have means that they will be able to use the contraceptive method more as it was intended by the science to use it. If we don't create a situation where someone has to run out and pick up another pack they weren't expecting to, um, making, making getting pills or other contraception a hassle is a very bad idea. 
Right, so is this um, available for all, no matter what your method is, that this, uh, it's good for a year once, you're, once your doctor has approved you for? As long as it's a prescription, yes. Uh, right. Prescription, yes. okay. So like so. for example, an IUD you don't get a prescription for, so mm -hmm. it doesn't cover but that. But that's so also just the, installed, like the yes. Inject injectables? Mm -hmm. or? Mm -hmm. We can only inject, you know, every, every number of months um, just because that's how the dosing of that works. Yeah. Um, and um, we don't hand somebody a package of needles or something. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but generally, we, generally <laughs> the other methods, the ones we can, people can carry out and, and yes. have at home, that, those yes. are the ones. Primarily that birth control pills. Right. Yeah. Okay. That's what we're talking about. And other horm hormonal methods like patches and rings. Wow, there's uh, more out there than I even knew. <laughs> I know. Every time you turn around, right? It's a lot different than Margaret Sanger's day. Oh, wow. <laughs> Thankfully, um, not the pickle vet. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. I am definitely going to leave today with that. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what's... What's coming up next for Planned Parenthood in Hawaii? What, mm -hmm. are you, what are you looking at? What are you, what are you, what's really important now? Well, we're very eager to have this election um, turn out um, oh. in important ways. People pay attention to people who are interested in health care issues. Um, we are in the process of a very large capital campaign. It's very much our hope to um, find and purchase a um, headquarters building here for Honolulu. Um, because we feel like we, we want to be here in the next hundred years. And so we want a, a real stake in the ground. Um, we are expanding our, our teen council programs on the various islands, and we're looking for people who want to invest in those um, to start them up. Um, so a great deal going on. Obviously, we want our app to grow. Um, so call, you know, click in, call us up, and we'd be happy to serve you. Wow, that's, that, that's big. Um, so, uh, uh, buying a, uh, or building a, yep. mm -hmm. wow, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. But how exciting. Oh, it's very exciting. And how does, how would one, if one were interested in supporting the, the peer group mm -hmm. development, how, how would that, how would that happen? If people are interested in becoming donors to Planned Parenthood for specific things or in general, um, you can contact us at the information that's, I think, supplied here at the end of the show credits. Yes, uh, yes and, absolutely. And we'd be delighted to talk to you. <coughs> okay. So um, people don't often think of uh, Planned Parenthood's work as being sustainability-oriented, mm -hmm. but very much so it is. And I just wanted to, uh, uh, recently we had as part of a lecture series here, Eric Esadurian in town, and he mm -hmm. put up a, a, a poster of the six most important things to really carry us through uh, climate change and so forth. Right. And I was very interested to see that um, having fewer children, cor politically correctly mm -hmm. um, <laughs> stated, um, was was number two on the list, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering whether that conversation is happening um, in your world since you deal with this every day. Mm -hmm. Kind of, are, are people making those connections between? Oh, most definitely. People very much um, want to be <coughs> able to manage the size of their families and the spacing of their children. Um, people make different choices on how large they want their families to be. But almost nobody says, my goal is really a huge number of kids. Most people have something more manageable in mind. Um, our job is obviously to make everyone's individual choices possible for them. Um, but a uh, great many people like the support they get from a good contraceptive method so that they can make the, their own decisions as they go through their lives. And all of you have the most amazingly upbeat countenance. <laughs> Given what you have to go through mm -hmm. um, uh, from time to time, it's really, I, I just get so much energy just being in the same room with you. You're wonderful. I, you know, I think what you're feeding off on from all of us is that we love what we do mm -hmm. because we really believe that we are all in this together, that we are all striving for a world in which women get to live up to their highest potentials. Mm -hmm. And this is one way in which they get to do it, by taking care of their health. And, uh, yeah, so, so I think true. that's why we're... Uh, uh, we don't get beaten down uh, mm -hmm. by what's going on out mm -hmm. there, and uh, Hawaii is a beautiful example of why uh, the work that we do pays mm -hmm. off, and certainly the work we do out there, and we're growing it here on Hawaii, is working with volunteers and educating folks about what we do here, what happens in their legislature, what happens in their local governments, so that they can become engaged, engaged and also empowered. So I was reading about uh, uh, that the, your peer groups have won awards, actually, yes. for, for 
how being super effective. They are super effective. And um, uh, do we have any good um, stories about how that actually works? It's, it's really tremendous. Um, what we do is we pick sort of the natural leaders out of uh, the various schools, and we're beginning this on Honolulu. We have our first cohort of teen council um, teenagers uh, getting together right now, and we take them through an extensive training program so that they are capable of um, talking to people about what it is that they've learned. And we also do a big um, slice of teen theater skills. So oh. they act out these scenarios in front of their colleagues, which is so important. A lot of young people don't realize the incredible importance of um, respectful communication, what might be a flag for someone that a relationship might be veering into abusive. Um, a lot of people don't have um, um, role models at home that might uh, help them understand now you're in kind of a danger zone. Um, what, what should women insist on? in terms of how they're treated. Um, how do we ensure that, we, that children aren't bullied at school? How do we make sure that young people don't anesthetize themselves with drug and alcohol about experiences that are new to them that they're nervous about? How can a young person refuse to do something they're not yet comfortable with doing without feeling like the last geek on the planet? You know, what, what kind of skills can we impart to someone so that they feel empowered by talking about what it is they want rather than um, victimized by it? And so all of those skills are what we try to bring along in these teen councils, and um, they are absolutely tremendous. And not only that, we have these teenagers go once a year into the mm -hmm. legislatures mm -hmm. when they're developed in order to, to lobby for their own interests. And you can they, talk, Elaine, um, about what, it, what that experience is. They are is. incredibly powerful. We always hear back from legislators that that was the most impressive, uh, um, you know, 15 minutes they'd had in a very long time because these young people are so educated and they understand what they're talking about and what they're telling these legislators about. And so I know Lori is super excited because Absolutely. we're just starting this new teen council here. Oh, so okay. will be, I <laughs> want to <laughs> make sure that I'm watching that on the monitor when, when the first cohort right. of Plan Parenthood um, uh, graduates uh, when, when, when do, do you think it'll be in time for, for next? Well, we'll probably take them to the next legislative I'm session sure. on, on, yes. on our, what we would call our teen lobby day, and you're most certainly invited. <laughs> uh, we have it's had really the young people explain their world to legislators, and, um, and the legislators' eyes are opened. The yeah. scales fall yes. from their eyes. Well, thank you so much, ladies, for coming okay. down to talk to us, and here's to the next hundred years. <laughs> thank you.